The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh... <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Rushing home from work through the sloppy streets of Summerfield, Gildersleeve comes to a street corner where he finds his neighbor, Mrs. Bullard, hesitating before a large puddle of slush. At once, the gentleman comes out in it. Oh, Mrs. Bullard. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Better let me help you across there. Allow me. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, but don't get your feet wet. Uh, don't worry. Just give me your hand. But you're standing right in it. Uh, don't worry. I've got rubbers. Oh. Uh, got a good grip? <laughs> now, don't be afraid. When I say jump, you... Oh. 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 Hold on. Don't oh. let go. Oh, gracious. Oh. Oh. Have, you, have you got your balance? <laughs> yes, I'm safe. Oh, well... I think perhaps we'd better go down to the next corner and cross there. <laughs> yes, I guess we'd better. <laughs> Pretty sloppy going, isn't it? <laughs> Lucky thing I came along. Uh, by the way, how's Mr. Bullard? Haven't seen him lately. Oh, Rumson is fine. Oh, that's good. And little Craig? Well, we're having a little trouble with Craig. Oh? It seems Miss Cuthbert is starting up her dancing classes again, and I want Craig to go. I think it's time he started, don't you? Oh, very important for a boy, yes. I sent Leroy a couple of years ago. That's just the trouble. You know how Craig worships Leroy and imitates him. Well, it seems Leroy has informed Craig that dancing school is a lot of nonsense. Oh, he has, has he? Craig flatly refuses to go. I can't do a thing with him. By George, Leroy will go over there and apologize. Oh, that's not at all necessary. Please don't blame Leroy. I just thought if you could persuade Leroy to tell Craig the dancing school is not really so bad. Mrs. Bullard, you leave that to me. You just send Craig over. I'll take care of Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, what's this Mrs. Bullard tells me about you? What, Mrs. Bullard? You told Craig that dancing school was a lot of baloney. Didn't you? Didn't you? Well, I... When you knew perfectly well that his mother was trying to get him to go. Didn't you? Well, it is a lot of baloney. You know nothing about it. You went to two lessons two years ago. But now Miss Cuthbert is so old. There's plenty you could have learned from Miss Cuthbert, young man, and don't you forget it. The purpose of dancing school is not to teach you dancing. It's to teach you manners. Teach you grace and poise. How to walk across a room without falling over the furniture. Or, uh, that's Craig at the door. And when he comes in here, I want you to tell him it's important to go to dancing school. I want you to sell it to him. But what will I tell him? I don't care what you tell him. Just get him to go. That's all. Now, quiet. Oh, hello, Craig. I want to talk to Leroy. I'll see if he's busy. Come in, Craig. Only wipe your feet first. Gentlemen here to see you, Leroy. Well, hello there, Craig. Come in. Yes, indeedy. Hi, Leroy. Hi. Mom said you wanted me to come over. Answer him, Leroy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I'm here. Go ahead, Leroy. Answer it. Yeah. Good thing you came over. <laughs> you want to play? Yeah, let's, let's go to my room. Leroy! <laughs> Calling me up? Come back here. Yes, Unc. Tell him, Leroy. I was gonna. Tell him right here. The... Craig? Yeah? Go ahead, Leroy. What I said the other day, you know, about dancing school, I mean, about it isn't so very much fun. You said it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to believe everything you hear, Craig. Dancing school is a lot of fun. Isn't it, Leroy? Yeah. Well, go ahead. You have more to say than that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you see, the thing about dancing school, Craig, uh, the thing about dancing school, uh, well, the thing about it is it, it teaches you things. What? Well, Leroy? I've forgotten what it teaches you. Oh, no, Craig. <laughs> I just told you, it teaches you poise, among other things. Yeah, it teaches you poise. What's that? I've forgotten. You never knew. <laughs> Leroy, you're not trying. Now, if you don't get busy... It's... Okay, okay. And no kidding, Craig. You ought to go to dancing school. It's super. No kidding. Why did you tell me it stinks? I was just kidding. Yes, he was just kidding, Craig. If you go to dancing school, you have a whole lot of fun, really. Doing what? Well, um, dancing and everything. And then you have swell eats after. Sherbet and lady fingers. Oh, and Miss Cuthbert, you'll like her. She's awful nice. Uh, besides, dancing school's important, Craigie. It, it teaches you how not to be a bum all your life. <laughs> you, you learn swell things. Uh, how to be graceful and how to do all these steps and how to have good manners and how to uh, hold a girl properly and everything. It's swell. If it's so swell, why don't you go? <laughs> what? I said, why don't you go? <laughs> That's a fair question, Leroy. I won't go unless Leroy goes. You dirty little... No, no, Leroy. <laughs> I think that's a very nice idea, Craig. I think it would do Leroy good. Oh, well, no, you don't. You don't catch me going to that thing. We'll discuss that later, young man. I won't go unless Leroy goes. <laughs> you won't catch me going. All right, just for that, you'll go. Unc. Yes, Leroy? You didn't really mean it, did you, what you said last night? What did I say last night? About me going to dancing school? Of course I meant it. Oh, for corn's sake, all on account of Craig. After I already went to That it. will do, Leroy. The argument is closed. I wish to hear no more about it. When Miss Cuthbert's class opens, you'll be there. Good evening, Bertie. What's new? Oh, nothing much. Nothing at all, I guess. Well, no news is good news. Yes, sir. Uh, was there something, Bertie? Uh, Mr. Gilsey, you ain't really planning to make Leroy go to dancing school. I see no reason why not. Why do you ask? Well, I was just thinking. Of course, it ain't none of my business, but when a boy gets himself all worked up like that... Well, it's like the man says. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him dance. Uh-huh. Oh, why don't you let him off, Mr. Kilsleaf? Maybe later on when he's older. Bertie I'll Leroy get... put you up to this. Oh, no, sir. Bertie. <laughs> well, not exactly he didn't. Send Leroy downstairs to me. He ain't upstairs, Mr. Kilsleaf. He's out in the kitchen. Oh, hiding in the kitchen, eh? Send him to me. Mr. Gilsleeve, you ain't going to be too hard on him. Seems like... I'll got... do what I'll do. Send him in here. Yes. Confound it. I don't want to go on arguing about this. When I say something settled, it's settled. We've been through this a dozen times. All this fuss. Leroy, what's all this fuss about? Who's making a fuss? I, I don't want to hear any more about it. Well, you ask me. Never mind. You're acting like a baby about the whole thing, Leroy. Oh, don't make me go to that dancing class, please. Please, huh? Now, see here, we've I been... I can't do it, Uncle. Honest, if you make me go, I'll die. I'll do anything, Uncle. Only don't make me do that. I feel sick every time I go. I feel sick right now. <laughs> this is ridiculous, Leroy. Now, calm down. There's nothing so terrible about dancing class. What's so terrible about it? Girls. <laughs> There's nothing so terrible about girls. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to say. <laughs> she says dance around and make conversation. How can you do that with girls? Well, that's that's simple enough, my boy. And besides, all the other fellows are looking at you. Well, just remember they're probably. And besides, they don't like me. Who doesn't? Girls. <laughs> My boy, this whole thing is just something you've built up in your own mind. No, it isn't. You've got to learn to get along with girls. That's very important. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. That's one reason why I'm sending you to dancing class, Leroy, so you'll learn to get along with girls. How do you think I learned? Learned what? 
I was trying to explain to Leroy, my dear, that I think it's time he learned to get along with girls. Don't you agree? I'll say. The trouble with girls, they're all like Marge. That's not true. I mean, what if they are? Now, just a minute. Why don't you make her go to dancing school if it's so important? Teach her to get along with boys. She should have got along with me. It just so happens, Mr. Leroy. Never mind, my dear. Your sister gets along with boys very well, Leroy. Other boys? I've never had any complaint on that score. She gets along with them too well. <laughs> yeah, show them whose pin you're wearing. Go ahead, show them, I dare you. Leroy. What's this, my dear? Go ahead, take off your coat. Show them your sweater. Oh, Leroy, I could kill you. Marjorie. Well, it's nothing to make such a great big fuss about. All the girls are wearing pins. This pin belongs to a boy, you say? What boy? Jerry Walsh. What difference does it make who it belongs to? Marjorie, what's the meaning of this? It doesn't mean a thing, for heaven's sake. It means they're in love. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> well? It just means we're going together, that's all. Return the pen in the morning. But, Unky, all oh, it's... Return it's a... it to its owner, whoever he is. I thought I'd brought you up well enough, my dear, to know that a lady never accepts jewelry from a man until after they're married, or at least engaged. Uncle Mort, that may have been so in your day, but if you know the first thing about... My day? Young lady, the trouble with you is you're boy crazy. I swear that's all you ever think about. Well, that's a fine way. I will not have you carrying on with boys, you understand? I will not have it. Then why do you want me carrying on with girls? <laughs> I'm nobody. I just pay the bills around here, that's all. I give up. More about the great Gildersleeve in a few moments. Most women are experienced shoppers of long standing, but grocers tell us that more and more men are doing the family's food shopping now, especially on weekends. Yes, we're quite a choosy lot, Mr. Lang. Don't think we grab just anything we see. In our neighborhood store, the men shoppers often argue plenty about the merits of one food product over another. Well, quick, what have you been saying about parquet margarine? <laughs> Not much room for argument there, Mr. Lang. We think the flavor of parquet margarine is pretty much all right. Given a choice, I'll pick parquet every time. It's our family's favorite spread for bread. Saves a pretty penny on the food budget as well. Yes, men and women everywhere are talking about parquet margarine's quality, too. Today you'll find parquet the same high quality as always. Fresh and country sweet in flavor. Rich in good nourishment. So next time you shop, be sure to look first for this spread that tastes so good. Look first for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who has set aside the problems of his own niece and nephew to address the Parent Teachers Association on theirs. Evidently, his remarks have been well received. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How was I, Eve? Did I do all right? Oh, yes, I thought you were fine. I didn't have an idea in the world till I got up on my feet that it just seemed to pour out of me. Yes. <laughs> I never stopped once I got started. I think a little preparation might have helped you stay closer to the assigned subject. Huh? But I'm really very grateful. We couldn't get anyone else. Well, I didn't know you... <laughs> didn't know you tried everybody in town. Oh, it wasn't that... Anyhow, the ladies were all crazy about you. Yeah. They seemed to enjoy the little light touches I threw in here and there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, can I drive you home? Oh, I can't go home yet, Throckmorton. I have some work to finish in my office. Just look at all those teachers' reports. Hmm. End of the term, you know. Well, can't you take this stuff home? Mm, it's much easier just to do it in the office. Well, I had something I wanted to talk to you about, Eve. A problem. Well, suppose you come up to the office, then, and we can talk there for a minute. All right. You sure you can carry all that stuff? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem now, Throckmorton? Is Leroy baffling you again? How'd you guess, Eve? That's only part of it. It's really very complicated, Eve. I can't believe that. 
open the door, my hands are full. Oh, sure. If it's unlocked. No, I left it unlocked. Thank you. <sighs> there. Now, what's bothering you? You are. Throckmorton. <laughs> Well, gosh, we're all alone. I don't see what that has to do with it. Eve, what does a fellow have to do? Give you an apple? <laughs> Please, Throckmorton, I've got such a lot of work to do. You just made up all that about having a problem in order made to... Made it up. Eve, I tell you, I've got a real problem. Not only with Leroy, but with Marjorie, too. What is it? You sound as if you don't believe me. I'll let you know after I hear it. You sure make it tough. Well, it's a problem like this. Leroy doesn't seem to take the interest in girls he ought to be taking. Then on the other hand, there's Marjorie. Absolutely daft on the subject of boys. Isn't that terrible? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. What? I wouldn't try to force them. Just let nature take its course. Nature? That's no way. What's all this child psychology for? Well, at some stages, the best and most scientific thing to do is let children alone. Now, I imagine if your parents had known that, you might have developed differently. Why, Eve, how would you want me different? Oh, not different, but, well, where women are concerned, you... What? Well, it's hard to express. Gosh, you just told me I did fine with those PTA women. I did, too. I had them eaten out of my hand. Oh, yes, you're fine in that sort of situation. It's only in your more personal relationships that I feel there's something missing. Sure there's something missing. But every time I lay a finger on you, you shove me away. That's just it. You seem to think of me, or possibly all women, as... Well, just something to grab. Eve! Did I grab you? Well, not quite. Well, gosh, you're attractive, you know. Didn't you ever hear about the moth and the flame? <laughs> Throckmorton, you're not a moth. Besides, a woman doesn't want to attract a man just by chemistry. She wants him to respect her, to develop interests in common, to get to know her as a person. That could take weeks. I don't think a few weeks is too long to build a real relationship. <sighs> I guess it just isn't my style, Eve. I wouldn't know how to go about it. Oh, now you're just being silly. You could do it very easily. Try to find out what a woman's interested in. Ask her some questions about herself. Assume she's interested in books or politics or music, not just in you. Oh. Suppose you asked a woman if she was interested in chamber music, and it turned out that she was just crazy about it. Don't you see? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Darn it. Are you interested in chamber music? Throckmorton, you're impossible. What did I do? Nothing. You're just impossible, that's all. Well, I must say, you tell me I shouldn't just sail in, you tell me to beat around the bush a while, and when I try it, I'm impossible. What do you want? Gosh, why don't you make up your mind? <laughs> Nothing I can do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? No. If you don't want me sitting around here, Peavy, just say so. Oh, no, no. I'm always glad to have a customer drop in. It's no obligation to buy. Well, you pay out today, isn't it? That's yeah, January for you. Of course, we might get a call. Listen, Peavy, in your opinion, am I attractive to women? Attractive? Yes. To women? Yes. In my opinion? Yes. Well, now, that's a hard question for me to answer. I'm not a woman. I know you're not a woman. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, how did this question happen to come up? A certain party is trying to give me the idea I don't know how to handle women. How in the world could anybody say a thing like that? Well, suppose we take a look at the record. Yeah. What do you mean by that? You're over 40 and you're not married. What's that got to do with it? I've passed up some pretty attractive women, Peavy, as you well know. You have? Certainly I have. 
I'm too much of a gentleman to name names, but... Well, you know, I came pretty close to marrying a certain widow. And a certain school principal, too. By George, I'd forgotten that. Well, Miss Goodwin been picking on you, has she? Miss Goodwin has nothing to do with this. With a certain party... Well, tell me, Peavy. Do you think you have to sneak up on a woman? Oh, I've never done anything like that. <laughs> I don't mean to sneak up on her and say boo. I mean, do you think you have to go through a whole long campaign... How long did you chase? How long did you court, Mrs. Beaton? Uh, before or after we were engaged? Well, how long before you asked her to marry you? Mm, well, I guess it was two years before I felt I could put the question to her. Two years? And you were courting her exclusively all that time? No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Perhaps I gave that impression to... Uh, Mrs. Peavy. She was Miss Horsefall at the time. Yes, I know that. So you courted her for two years, and then you got engaged. Yes, she accepted a small solitaire diamond. We were engaged for four years. And then we were married. Been married ever since. Gosh, six years courting one woman. Tell me, Peavy, was it worth it? I said, was it worth it? Mr. Gildersleeve, I wouldn't be surprised with snow before tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know why I bother to ask you. I don't know why I ever ask you anything. Goodbye. <laughs> Is that you, Uncle? Yes, it's me. Uncle, it's home, Marge. Hooker phoned you a while ago. Glad I missed it. Yeah. Say, Unc, did you decide anything yet? Decide anything? About what? Well, dancing class starts tomorrow. Don't bother me about that now. I cannot be bothered with your trifling problems. Hello, Uncle. Good evening, my dear. I'm going to see Jerry tonight. Well? Did you decide anything? About what? About his pen. Confound it. I'll not have you children badgering me about these trifles. The minute I walk in the door, you're after me. Can't you ever decide anything for yourself? I've got problems of my own. Would you like the evening paper? I suppose so. Thank you. <sighs> Gallup poll shows 66% are against eating. <laughs> Doorbell. Shall I go on? Yes, and whoever it is, send him away. Okay. Evening, Leroy. Your Uncle home? Oh, well, he... I know he is. I don't know why I bothered to ask. <laughs> Force a habit, I guess. I just want to see him for a moment. Uh, yeah, but he... Leroy, what did I tell you? Oh, gosh, what can I do? Evening, Trap Martin. Marjorie. Good evening, Judge. Well, what do you want? I tried to call you this afternoon, but you weren't in your office. I know that. What do you want? I was wondering if you'd care to come to the Lawyers Club meeting with me tonight. No, I've just come from a meeting. It promises to be a most interesting program. The subject is um, criminals and heredity. Out of town speaker, Judge Fowler from Chicago. Oh, uh -huh. why are you so anxious for me to go? Well, I believe Judge Fowler is interested in setting up a local committee to raise funds. Oh no, you don't. I've got a headache. I can think of other reasons if I have to. Yeah, well, I won't press you, Gildy. But if you should get to feeling better, I... say, almost forgot. I've got a TL for you. TL? What's that? A compliment. I was down at the library this afternoon. You know that girl at the desk just as you come in? Miss Fenwick? That's the one. Well. <laughs> a compliment, you say? What does she say? T.L. means trade last, Gildy. You have to tell me something complimentary about myself first. That's no fair, you old goat. Who'd say anything complimentary about you? Well, that's your attitude. You can just wonder what Miss Fenwick said. It was pretty nice, too. Well, I gotta run along. Wait a minute. Bye, Leroy, Marjorie. Poker. Goodbye, Gildy. <laughs> Miss Fenwick, eh? Hmm. I've been forgetting about her. I wonder what she said. Hello, Miss Fenwick? Guess who this is? <laughs> That's right. What are you doing tonight, Miss Fenwick? 
Oh, you are. Well, couldn't you... Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Nuts. Say, Miss Fenwick, are you interested in chamber music? <laughs> well, what do you know? I'm crazy about it myself. Isn't that a coincidence? I just can't get enough chamber music. As a matter of fact, that's why I called you. Somebody told me you were crazy about chamber music, and... How about tonight? How would 8 o'clock be? <laughs> Great. I'll see you at 8, Miss Fenwick. So long. Tell me I don't know how to handle women. <laughs> well, what are you kids looking like that for? Still worrying about dancing school, Leroy? If you don't want to go, you don't have to. Oh, you mean it? Sure, I mean it. Plenty of time for that stuff. And Marjorie, if you want to keep that kid's pin, go ahead and keep it. Grab all the pins you can. Pin them all over you. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, guess I better go upstairs and dress. Call me when supper's ready. Yum, bum, 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 yum. What a character. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. A short while ago, we mentioned the fact that more men are helping their wives to shop for food. And believe me, these men are learning something you've always known. They're learning that the quality of some brands is far superior to others. And naturally, when it comes to spreads for bread, they're quick to recognize that parquet is top quality. Yes, parquet is craft quality. Then you'll find them praising parquet's flavor, fresh and country sweet. It's so delicious on rolls, bread, pancakes, and waffles. And parquet is a great energy food, one of the very best you can serve. So, ladies, if you're looking for a spread to really please a man, look first for delicious, nourishing parquet when you shop. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Fenwick. As one music lover to another, ta-da! <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Won't you come in? You bet I will. Ah, nice little place you've got here. Well, I throw him a coat. Your coat? Oh, anywhere. Although I'll be ready in just a second. I only have to put on a hat. Hat? Where are you going? I understood we were going to a concert. Concert? I thought you said we were going to hear some chamber music. Uh... <laughs> Who wants to hear chamber music when there's a nice, cozy little place like this with a fire and everything? We can have a lot of fun if we just stay right here. How about it? Mr. Gildersleeve, please leave my house at once. What? Please leave my house immediately. Here's your hat. Hat? Well, I... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to shove. I... I give up. I positively give up. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Earl Ross as Judge Hooker, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. Stay tuned now for Duffy's Tavern. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night, folks. <laughs> Chocolate, strawberry, pineapple, even coffee, ice cream. Make any kind you like right in your own refrigerator or home freezer. It's easy with Frizz. Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z, -Z, is a new craft product that gives you delicious, satin, smooth ice cream rich with plenty of milk and cream. For vanilla, all you do is add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Flavor variations are simple. Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor. Be sure to ask for Frizz. Six generous servings from one small package. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.